So our boundary would be at r equal to lambda r dvz by dr would equal to zero. If you plug in there, the left hand side will become zero. Then r here becomes lambda r, lambda and capital R. So you can solve for C1. And you will get C1 equal to minus pressure difference lambda square r square over 2, right? If you plug C1 back into this initial equation, then, or you can plug it back here, so that we do not have to worry about velocity uh, dv you get tau rz right if you look at the term there's common term p0 minus pl over 2l that's a common term i can take r um, let me ask you this can I bring R here? Divide all the way. Can I divide R from this term so that this term becomes R and this term becomes C1 over R? Can I do that? Yes, I can. We cannot do it in our last problem because our last problem includes the position where R equal to zero. But in this problem, at r equal to zero, is not in our system. So we can do that, okay? So divide everything by r. This one turns to be r. This one is c1 over r, okay? So you have r minus lambda square r square over small r. Just to be pretty, change the term a little. Take R out, take capital R out. This term will become R over R, small r over capital R, subtracted by lambda square, capital R over small r. This would be our shear stress profile. Of course, this shear stress profile is not completed yet. Why? Because lambda is still unknown. We do not know lambda yet. Okay? Now, either you plug C1 in here, okay, and rearrange the equation again, or you plug tau RZ by this term, you get the same equation, right? You can do both, either plug C1 back in this equation and solve for VZ, or plug this term back to tau RZ. Either way, you get, you get the same equation. What you get would be something like this. Now we know that Differential of R over capital R by dr is equal to 1 over capital R. So that we can change dr here into dr over r. Can you see that? 
So dr would equal to r capital R d small r over capital R. I do that simply because here on the right hand side of the equation we have this term. So if you change the integration variables the integrate itself will be easier. Is it easier? It's supposed to be easier. So bring R there over there and change it this one would be capital R d small r over capital R. Bring it on the right hand side. This one turned to be capital R squared. Okay. Then they can integrate. So left hand side, integration of the left hand side should give you Vz. The right hand side, all of these terms will be constant. So bring it out. Okay, this square comes from this R and that R becomes R square. Inside, you have integration of R over R minus, or let's put it this way, integration here, lambda square capital R over R D R over R. All right. The integration would give you this. The first term, when you integrate it, what will you get? You get whatever inside here, square over two. over 2. This term, lambda would be a constant. Integration of this term would give you what? Ln of r over r, r over capital R. Right? Plus C2. Now, I'm going to bring 1 over 2 out, change this part to 4. Of course, I'm going to multiply the second term by 2. Okay? Then, since C2 is a constant, it will be constant anyway. I can bring it inside here, can I? <coughs> if I bring it inside, I can call this one maybe C2 prime or C2 star because everything up front here will be constant. And let us call this part A simply because I'm too lazy to write it down repeatedly. Now, how many unknowns do we have in this equation? Two. I suppose that will be the answer. Two. What are they? C2 and lambda. So how many boundary conditions do we need? Two. What are they? Do we have two boundary conditions? Yes, because these two boundary conditions are supposed to give you velocity here, velocity, at certain position, R. Do we have it? Yes. One is at the surface of inner tube. The other one is at the surface of outer tube. Okay? 
So our boundary condition, first one would be at r equal to inner tube kr, velocity becomes zero. So what you have would be zero on the left hand side equal to minus a times what? Now r here becomes kr, capital R and capital R there cancel out. You will have k squared minus 2 lambda squared ln k plus c2 prime. Let me call this one c2 prime once I move it inside. The other boundary would be at r equal to capital R outside tube velocity is zero as well. So here zero minus a one right minus when r is equal to capital R this term become one logarithm of one is zero so added by c2 prime. You have two equations how many unknown? Is k unknown? K here is specification, it's part of our problem, our problem statement, so it's not unknown. So we have only two unknowns, c2 prime and lambda. We can solve for both. From this equation, equation alone, you can get c2 prime. So c2 prime equal to minus one, right? And then plug c2 prime back in the first one, you can solve for two lambda squared. And there's a reason why I do not solve for lambda only. I solve it for 2 lambda squared. Simply because it appears at 2 lambda squared in this equation. If you take a square root first, it would be very complicated and you need to square it back anyway. So there might be an error along the way. Okay? So after you get C2 prime, after you get lambda square, then you can simply just plug it back in velocity profile and you will get the, the final velocity profile. And I'm not going to go all the way through the derivation anymore, just an answer. This is the answer given in the textbook. And there's a slight modification here. If, if you can notice, I use ln k here. In the textbook, it would be ln 1 over k. Simply because k would be less than 1. 1 over k would be a positive number. I mean, ln of 1 over k would be a positive number. By changing the form into this form, you can determine the sign very easily. Okay.